Hi everyone. The earlier sessions this week we have been talking about the uh, evaluation of water project in terms of uh, its uh, economic feasibility and uh, we were discussing the various capital budgeting methods. Okay. We did talk about a uh, couple of methods in the previous session, the payback period which is one of the very basic uh, capital budgeting technique and then the discounted payback period which is a step further in order to consider the time value of money in a payback period. The one of the major drawbacks of payback period that it does not consider the time value of money. Uh, in order to overcome that a discounted payback period method uh, which has been devised also we discussed in the previous session. So, today we will uh, take up uh, next method which is NPV or net present value. So, NPV or net present value is actually one of the most used method for capital budgeting. The method is uh, fairly simple, it eventually estimates the present value of all incremental cash flow. If there are taxes or if there are depreciation or if there are uh, like uh, the time value of money discounts, so all these things are considered and then net incremental cash flow is uh, quantified or is uh, measured and the total investment, the total initial outlay was uh, is will be subtracted from the net incremental cash flow or from the total cash flow and that gives the net present value. So, it actually reflects the difference between the market value of the project discounted to the present and its initial outlay or initial expenditure. So, whatever initial investment that is to be subtracted from the overall market value of the project at that particular time and uh, then the difference gives us the net present value. So, obviously, the net present value if higher is actually better because that uh, suggests that this project or this activity is likely to run in profit or likely to generate more revenues than its initial outlay or than is its investment cost. So, uh, the procedure for estimating is uh, that we first need to estimate the expected future cash flows, then we need to estimate the required return for uh, the given risk level and find the present value of cash flow based on the return or based on the discount rate which uh, whatever we consider and then subtract the initial investment from that sum of the net cash flows. So, that is what gives us the net present value. The net present value is uh, estimated using uh, this formula that where the C0 is the initial investment. So, this initial investment will actually be subtracted from the total net cash which is coming after all the discounts and at a required rate of return. Now, the if you see the CT is let us say net cash flow generated by the project at any given time or let us say in the year T or in the Tth year if T is the time scale or let us say at uh, 5 years, so T becomes 5. So, in that case the value of the cash generated during that will be discounted using the rate of return required or the discount rate which we have selected. 
so that will be discounted and as we were discussed uh, as we have discussed earlier during the discounted payback period method as well that this discounting is done by dividing 1 plus rate of return to the power t. So, if let us say I am getting a net profit of 5 lakhs in fourth year, okay, let us say in the fourth year of the project, I am generating a net profit of 5 lakh from any project or any activity. So, that value of 5 lakh will be taken as 5 divided by 1 plus whatsoever my expected rate of return or discount rate let us say consider that my expected rate of return is 10. So, if my rate of return is 10, so this becomes k then k becomes 10 by 100 because 10 percentage. So, that is 10 by 100 equal to 0 0.1 to the power 4 because it is in the fourth year. So, this becomes 5 divided by 1.1 to the power 4. So, instead of 5 I will have to take this value and this value is to be summed for all times. So, if my project life is let us say n years, okay, then the t value will be ranging from 1 to n because it is n year let us say uh, n is for example, n is 5. So, then I will have to take this value. So, uh, capital generated or cash flow generated in year 1 divided by 1 plus 1 to the power 1, then capital generated in the year 2 divided by 1 plus 1 to the power 2 plus in year 3 1.1 to the power 3 and that way up to n it will be estimated 1 plus 1 to the power n. So, all this will be summed and what this gives? This gives me the net cash inflow in present terms for the project. So, if this is my net cash and C0 is my initial investment, so the difference of the two is considered as net present value of the project. So, obviously, net present value will be probably negative for capital intensive project in the beginning because when the when we are not let us say we consider just two year phase only. So, the sum of these two may not be going to be a large number as opposed to C0, but as the duration of project increases. So, these numbers will keep on adding and this term will actually be keep on increasing. So, when this term becomes more than the capital investment, so that much life period of the project would be helpful. That much life period of the project would be helpful in order to make the project into positives. Otherwise, the project is actually not generating enough revenues to cover up its initial outlay or the basic investment that has been done in the form of capital at the starting of the project. So, based on this we accept a project if its net present value is greater than 0. So, uh, if net present value is greater than 0 that means the generated revenue or the present value of the generated revenue is higher than the present value of the capital. So, for a project of any time duration n when we discount the future earnings to the present time by using the appropriate rate of return and even after that we see that the net revenues or net cash inflow, the sum of the cash inflow in present terms is greater than the capital invested. That means, the project is safe and we can accept this project. So, the acceptance criteria become NPV greater than 0. And obviously, a positive NPV means that project is expected to add values, okay. while a negative NPV means it is expected to generate losses uh, in terms of the 
uh, capital. So, uh, this is the net present value concept and uh, let us take a example and see how the net present values are worked out. So, uh, consider that Surat Municipal Corporation decides to add an industrial water supply unit to meet the industrial demand for next 10 years. So, our project duration is becoming here 10 year. Okay. The required investment were estimated at uh, 40 crore. So, my initial outlay or the investment is 40 crore. A uniform tariff structure was proposed to charge water supplied at rate 40 kiloliter initially with 20 percent hike proposed after every 2 year. So, uniform tariff structure by now uh, you will be aware of what uniform tariff structure if you are following the earlier lectures we have discussed this uh, in detail in uh, week 5 or week 6. So, uh, the uniform tariff structure means that the price of the water is uniform irrespective of the volume consumed price per unit not the total tariff. So, that means whether somebody is consuming 10 kilo liter, 20 kilo liter, 40 kilo liter he has to pay the for the water at a fixed price like to begin with rupees 40 per kiloliter and then it says that it will be increased 20 percent after every 2 year. Okay. There is a 20 percent hike proposed after every 2 year. The initial demand for water is estimated at 12 million liters per day, 12 mld is the demand and it is forecasted to increase 3 million liters per year. So, that way our demand is also changing annually. Now, says that the assume operation and maintenance expenses to be rupees 25 per kiloliter for first 3 years, rupees 30 per kiloliter for next 3 years and rupees 40 per kiloliter for next 4 years. So, the total duration is 10 year and that is how we should take the uh, operation and maintenance expenses. And then we need to determine the net present value of the project at 12 percent discount rate or 12 percent return rate. It also says that ignore all other cost and revenue and consider tax rate at flat 40 percent on the net income. So, we get the valuable informations from this uh, problem statement that uh, what is the demand. Okay. So, the demand of water. for the 10 years that we can uh, actually estimate from here. Then we can estimate the rate of uh, operation and maintenance expenses. So, ONM expenses also we can estimate that uh, 25 for first 3 years, then uh, 30 for next 3 years and then uh, 40 for next 4 years. We also get the value of uh, the unit water or water tariff to begin with uh, that is uh, 40 here. Uh, again it is 40 here because it is hiked by 20 percent every 2 years. So, that means for next 2 years it is going to be 48, 48 and then again 1.2 times 48. So, that way the tariff is also given. So, using these three basic informations there are tax rate which is at a flat 40 percent and the initial investment is uh, 40 crore. So, you will use this information in order by uh, the approach suggested approach and we will try to compute the net present value for this project. So, let us see how the calculation goes ok. It is going up to 39. So, this becomes our water demand which is provided to us. Operation and maintenance rate 
is also provided to us. So, uh, 25 for first 3 year, 30 for next 3 and 40 rupees per kiloliter for next 4 years. So, this is also provided to us and a tariff structure is also provided to us 40, 48 and then again 20 percent hike, then for next 2 year 20 percent hike and then for next 2 year 20 percent hike. So, this way we get actually the uh, tariff structure also. Okay. 20 percent hike after every 2 year. Now, when we know the operation and maintenance rate, we can compute the yearly operation and maintenance cost as well. Okay. How we will compute that? So, uh, for example, let us take for year 1. So, our total demand is 12 million liters per day. Okay. Now, 12 million liters per day means 12 into 10 to the power 6 liters per day okay. or we can say it equal to 12 into 10 to the power 3 kiloliters per day. So, basically 12 million liters is equal to 12 into 10 to the power 3 which is equal to 12,000 kiloliters per day is the demand. Okay. So, when the demand is 12,000 kiloliters per day, this much kiloliter is being consumed in a day and 1 kiloliter exerts a operation and maintenance cost of 25. So, this into 25. So, this much rupees per day is the operation and maintenance ex uh, expenditure and when we are computing it for a year, we have to multiply it with 365. So, this number comes out to 10.95 crore rupees. Okay. So, that way we can estimate the operation and maintenance cost, okay, yearly operation and maintenance cost. Okay. For example, when the uh, when the demand is 30, okay, 30 million liters per day or 30 kiloliters per day, we, uh, 30,000 kiloliters per day. Okay. The rate is, uh, the operation and maintenance rate is uh, 40. So, this into 40 rupees per kiloliter and into 365. So, if one solves this, he will get this value 43.8 crore. So, this way we can estimate the yearly operation and maintenance cost. Similarly, we can estimate revenues from water charges, yearly revenues from water charges in similar fashion. So, what we will do here that the consumption is still the same 12,000 kiloliters per day. Now, the, the ONM rate or ONM expenditure is 25. So, we will multiply it with 25 for getting the ONM cost. However, the tariff rate is 40. So, instead of 25, if we multiply this by 40, so instead of 25, if we multiply this by 40, so we what we get is this number. Okay. Similarly, here instead of multiplying this uh, by 40, so let us say not using this 40 over here and rather using uh, the water tariff rate which is 69.12, then we are not going to get this number, but what we are going to get is this number, revenue from water charges. So, this way we will be able to calculate the revenue for water charges. Now, the yearly ONM is the expenditure of the company while the revenue generated or revenue from water charges is the income of the company. So, you must be very clear about this that whatever you are getting here is actually this is the expenditure and this is the income. 
okay. So, we got the yearly expenditure and we got the yearly income for the said uh, proposal. Okay. Now, when we know that okay, this is my going to be my income and this is my going to be my expenditure, so I can determine the cash flow, okay. net cash flow. So, that cash flow is going to be basically income which is cash flow in minus expenditure which is cash flow out. So, this ONM expenditure in the form of basically ONM and this is in form of the uh, your revenue from tariff. So, we need to subtract the expenditure from income, we need to subtract the uh, yearly operation and maintenance cost from the revenues recovered from water charges and if we take this difference, if we subtract it here, so we get these values after subtraction. So, the values that you are seeing here in the column cash flow is actually the net money inflow into the system on an annual basis. So, this project is likely to bring 6.57 crore rupees in first year, 8.21 crore rupees in second year, then 15.11 uh, in the third year that way towards the end 61.13 crore rupees in the 10th year. So, that is how the money is going to flow in this system if this project is employed. Now, whatever the money is net money is flowing in there is taxes onto that and uh, the question says that the tax is at flat 40 percent rate. So, 40 percent of this is going to be the taxes. So, this number this number multiplied by 0 0.4 will actually be giving this number. So, we can estimate the taxes and if we reduce the taxes, if we subtract the taxes from the cash flow, we get cash flow after the taxes. So, this is my net cash flow after the taxes which is probably the figure that I want that after paying the taxes, okay, after paying the operation and maintenance cost and recovering all the revenues, uh, the, the company now will have a net cash inflow into their system. Now, for the cash inflow into their system, they will have to pay taxes. So, the 40 percent as taxes and when those taxes, those 40 percent taxes are paid, the company, what company left with the cash flow after taxes which is used to estimate the net present value of the uh, of the project or of the company okay, that is operating this project. So, this, this column, the column that you, uh, the row that you see here actually gives the net cash flow after taxes, but one problem is still there that this cash flow that you are seeing is coming into different years and it is not normalized. So, the cash generated in first year in the form of 3.9 crore while cash generated in the 10th year is uh, around 36 crore. So, this 36 crore if you compare it with the first year or with the present value will not have the 36 year value. We have already discussed it that uh, the time value of money should be brought into the picture and these values should normally should be normalized okay, for the uh, future times. So, for that we use the rate of return or discount rate we can call that. So, it says that uh, the, for, uh, the discount rate is 1 point uh, 12 percent discount rate or 12 percent rate of uh, return is given into the question. So, we will use that 12 percent discount rate and get the discounted cash flow. Okay. So, how we will get the discounted cash flow? We know the cash flow after the taxes. So, this 3.9 into uh, sorry 3.9 divided by let us say uh, for getting discounted cash flow for this. So, 3.9 divided by 1.12 because 12 percent is the uh, 
12 percent is the net flow, uh, 12 percent is the rate of return. So, 1.12 to the power t, t in this case is 1, so 1.12 to the power 1, so this becomes uh, 3.52. Similarly, for any arbitrary let us say you take this, so this will become uh, 14 point for this particular uh, case it will become 14.508 divided by 1.12 to the power it is after 5 year to the power 5. So, that value will actually be equal to 8.32 t. Similarly, for the uh, last one which is in the 10th year it is going to be whatever value is this divided by 1.12 to the power 10. So, that way we will get the discounted cash flow and this discounted cash flow are the final values where we have incorporated all the aspects of the project. We have uh, incorporated the uh, ONM expenses for the project, then uh, revenues generated from the project, what is the net saving, then what is going to be the taxes onto that, after taxes what is left and then whatsoever is left, what is the time value of that amount. So, based on that we get from year 1 to 10, these are the net funds or net money that is going to be generated from the project. So, once we know this, as per the concept of net present value, we will have to sum all these. Okay. So, uh, when we sum these numbers, what we get is the summation because that discounted cash flow is actually this. This is our discounted cash flow for a one particular year and this is the summation. So, summing the discounted cash flow for year here 1 to 10, okay, this gives the total sum as rupees 76.83 crore rupees. So, 76.83 crore rupees is the sum of the discounted cash flow. Now, the initial outlay that was planned is 40 crore rupees. So, we get the net present value as sum of the discounted cash flow minus initial outlay. So, 76.83 minus 40 and 36.83 crore becomes the net present value of the project. So, this is uh, substantially higher than 1 uh, sub, uh, means substantially higher than 0 and th that is why we can say that this project is likely to generate profits and likely to generate revenues for the firm or for the organization. So, that is how the concept of net present value is uh, considered for the capital budgeting and for the assessment of economic feasibility of a project. So, uh, once we are able to find out the NPV of the project, we can make decisions about the uh, whether it is economically feasible or not. The NPV usually is one of the most preferred method as we said in the beginning, however, it, it also has certain pros and cons. So, uh, the advantages include that it considers the time value of money. Uh, in, in calculation of NPV, with the after cash flow and before cash flow both are considered over the uh, lifespan of the project. Okay. Profitability and risk of the project are given high priority based on the rate of return and uh, those factors that we choose and it eventually helps in maximizing the firm's value. While as on to the negative sides if you see, so it is uh, relatively difficult to use because we need to uh, discount all these values and calculate. So, uh, it is not that difficult, but when you compare with a simple let us say payback period. So, for uh, compared to those simple methods, it is relatively little difficult. Then it cannot give the accurate decisions if amount of investment of mutually exclusive projects is not equal. Okay. There are ways to uh, handle this problem though, how uh, the when the time frame or the amount of investment of the mutually exclusive projects are not equal how to handle this. 
uh, but generally it is not recommended in that senses because then uh, we rather go with the rate of return or internal rate of return procedure which gives the more better clue about the preference of the mutually exclusive projects. Further, uh, for unequal life project also, when the life is unequal, so uh, the because one project will evaluate the uh, net present value for 4 years time while other may evaluate for 6 year time. So, uh, there is a time gap which makes the decision of the NPV questionable. Okay. And uh, the discount rate which is used or the rate of return which is used is not calculated here, but rather is uh, taken based on a based on secondary informations or uh, secondary knowledge and that that what that is what used in order to calculating the uh, net present value because that discount rate has to be taken. So, that it depends on a taking discount rate or taking the time value of money from the secondary sources and it does not estimate that. So, those are some of the disadvantages. Uh, we will talk about the next method in the uh, coming up session, where we will uh, talk about the internal rate of return, which overcomes some of these discounts of NPV while uh, handling the time value of money as well. Thank you.